Hey, Word Warriors, it's me, Melissa, and as you know, this is day 76, so if you've missed some, go back and find them. Go to our channel, safehavenbiblecenter.com, and that's our website. Scan down the page, and you're going to find a link to our YouTube channel. And when you get there, subscribe, <laughs> but you're going to find out, at yesterday, we talked about boundaries. Now, today, we're going to take that a little bit further. God was the first one who set up boundaries. We know that, and we know that when we walk in obedience, that has boundaries around it. You can only go this far, and once you get past that, then you're stepping into a sinful situation. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, it says this. This is God speaking. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give you to the Israelites. I will give you every place that the soles of your feet shall tread. Uh, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. When we operate inside boundaries that God sets, we are setting ourselves up for blessings because the blessings come inside the boundaries. Now, when we ended, we ended up with a word that I said, this is a confrontational word. And that word is no. No. <laughs> and and we, we think, you know, the Bible says it's okay. It's all right to confront people in love and say, I can't go there. I can't do that. That's out of where God wants me. It's okay to say that. But people who have poor boundaries, they've not really established them well. They can't say no for nothing. They just agree to anything. And most of the time, they're just people pleasing. They just don't want to confront anything. Now, uh, if if we say no, that one of the reasons we hate to say no is because we feel like we're endangering a relationship. You know, if I say no to them, that they're not going to want to be around me. And, and and then what happens? Here's how that works. You say, well, you know, they wanted me to fix two hundred cookies tomorrow for the bake sale, and and I, I just I don't have the heart to say no because I I don't want to. I don't want to be ousted and I want them to really like me. So you stay up most of the night and you bake those cookies. And then you start to resent having done that. And you really regret the fact that you said yes instead of no. Well, by morning, not only do you resent having to do that, but you start to resent the people who ask you to do it. So it's not a good place to be. Then you got these people that try to pressure you to do something by using guilt. Guilt. Well, if you loved me, you'd do this. I mean, you know, a good daughter would do this. Aren't you a Christian? Christians have to do everything for everybody else. You need to read your Bible. You need to read your Bible. Don't just buy into that stuff. Gal Galatians 5, 22, 23 says this. And this is kind of... We have a, a sense of pressure from the outside, but we know what we should be inside. Listen to this. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and let me hear it, self-control. If you can't say no to external or internal pressure, You've lost control of your property, and you are not enjoying self-control. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And in another version, it says a spirit that's timid, but of power, love, and self-control, self-discipline. Now, I, some of you aren't going to like what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know me. Some of you get so mad at people for the way they treat you. They will treat you the way you allow them to treat you. If you don't say anything and you don't walk away, you are allowing bad behavior. And so it's your fault. Don't get mad at them. 
Oh, this is good preaching, Melissa. Well, anyway, but back to our story. If you let people bully you, you know, give them permit. You're giving them permission to do that. Um, your words let people know where you stand, what you like, what you accept. You know, you can say, "I don't like it when you yell at me. I don't like it when you're grouchy and you and you talk me. I don't like that." That tells people that's a boundary for them. Now, here's where you get in trouble. You can say that till your teeth fall out, but unless you enforce it, they're going to keep doing it. Sometimes you just have to say enough's enough, and you have to put some geographical distance between you. In Proverbs 22, verse 3, the very first part says, A prudent person, that's a person who's always looking ahead, foresees danger and takes precautions. Uh Sometimes we have no choice. We just have to physically remove ourselves from a situation in order to keep those boundaries straight and to create a safe place for ourselves. Uh, hopefully, when you do that and say, I can't be here as long as you talk to me like that, as long as you try to manipulate me, I can't do that. And and if you con continue in that, if they continue in that, you've got to keep the boundary up. But it may just be that they just needed to hear it from you one more time and they'll turn around and go back the right direction. Uh, here's another one. Sometimes taking time off from a person or project can be a way of regaining control over some area of your life where the boundaries fell down. Adult children, sometimes they just need to step back and breathe and because their parents don't realize you can't boss them applesauce. Once they're this old, you are not the boss applesauce. No more. They're old enough to make their own decisions. <clears throat> and it causes a boundary to be, I mean, you got they, they've got a boundary up saying, don't do that, don't do that. And if we persist in that, they're going to walk away. And you're going to be left without contact with them. So you've got to be careful with that. Uh, one of the big boundary problems that is when you run into, <laughs> into individuals who refuse to listen. They, they see your no as a challenge. And so they're going to do everything they can to tear it down. And they are determined to make your no into a yes. Controllers are the ones who want you to do what they want you to do, when they want you to do it, how they want you to do it. And they'll come after you. An aggressive controller, these are people that just flat don't like boundaries. And they run over fences like they're water. And they sometimes are verbal or physically abusive. Uh, but it's like they wor they live in a world of yes. Yes. I don't want to hear anything else. It's yes. You do it my way. Manipulating c controllers, they're the ones that uh, they try to guilt you into things. If you love me, you'll do this. Or sometimes flattery. Oh, has anybody ever told you nobody else can do it like you? I have fallen for that stupid line more than once. And there I go. Here I go. I'm doing all this stuff I don't want to do. Why? Because I fell for it. And they manipulated me into putting my boundary down. Does everybody know what I'm talking about here? Boy, I'd like to have some comments on this. I really would, because I think we're all in the same boat myself. Now, uh, I, I want to end, I think I'm going to end with that today, because I, I want to get into a little bit deeper maybe, but uh, if I see that nobody watches this tomorrow, I'll know that, oh, oh, my boundary was too high. <laughs> Anyway, I love you, and I know that God has a plan for us, and he's going to help us get through this. So uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person in here, and I, I pray, Father, that the boundaries that we've set in our lives, Lord, that though there were people will respect those boundaries. I pray, Father, that you give wisdom, direction, guidance to each one of us, and and Lord, help us to really think this through, because if we're being manipulated and we're wore out, wore out from doing what everybody else wants us to do. We just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now think about this. Ponder it. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.